Hello everyone, welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp. This time we will show some practical applications and computations of linkage disequilibrium using Plink. Here we have a neat script put together using Plink and R together and also doing some visualizations in the meantime. It consists of three parts. The first one showing some of the options and possibilities computing LD in Plink. The other one, the second part, shows the computation and the visualization of the so-called LD decay. And the third one is showing the procedure called LD pruning. But before we go anywhere, let me show you the help page of LD computations with Plink. So you see that there is a quite a number of options and we will show some of them. But I encourage you to check this one out in detail also read the explanations and perhaps experiment a little bit what you get when you are using the various options and option combinations. So we are back in R, ready to run some examples. To prepare this exercise, I downloaded some Hereford cattle data from the VIDA database, the, the website that I showed you in the video where I discuss open access data. So I just selected this Hereford cattle sort of at random, but uh, also if we are at it, we need to also cite the publication. And so this is Mato Kumali et al from PLOS One. For this particular exercise, we do a simple quality control and take just chromosome one. So we load the tidyverse package that will be useful and necessary later on with the visualizations and do the quality control and after the quality control, we are left with 2,671 variants and 31 cattle. In Flink, when we want to compute the LD and we want to use the R-square measure of the computation or the R-square metric, then what we use is the dash dash R2 option, which is of course the shortcut for R-square. When we run this, then we get a new file that consists of the name of the output file that we specified and with an extension .ld. So this is the, actually the file that stores all the results. So this is how the file looks like. We have the SNP A, the chromosome and the position and the name of SNP A and the chromosome, the position and the name of SNP B and the R square between them in the last column. You see that we have quite a lot of SNPs, but uh, only a few of them have actually the R square computed. And this is because by default, the Plink computes the R square only for the SNPs that are relatively close to each other and have a relatively high LD. So this is the default behavior, but of course, if you need something else, then you need to specify one of the many options that Plink provides. If you want to compute also LDs between SNPs that have a very low LD value, then you can specify this with the LD-window-R2 option. And here you can actually insert the lowest threshold that you want to accept for the R square. In my case, I try to print out all the values that have more than zero R square between them. So in other words, all the combinations between the SNPs. So this is how the file looks like. Again, the same structure. And you see now they are more SNP pairs shown in the file. And also that R square values are also much lower than the 0 0.2. The 0 0.2 being as the default threshold for R square values if you don't specify anything else. But still, here are not as many SNP combinations as you would expect. The reason being that not just R square is being limited by an invisible threshold, but also the distance is limited between SNPs for which the R square is computed. So if you want to circumvent also that threshold, you need to specify yet another option. So if you really want to get R square values between all SNPs in a specific region, you need to specify not just the LD window, so the minimal threshold for the R square that you accept, but also the window size and 
as for the number of SNPs and also the window size for the distance between the SNPs that you accept. And with these options, you have much more SNP combinations and R square computed for much more SNPs for your data set. Now with computation of LD, you are computing pairwise combinations between many markers and it is very easy to produce very large text files. So the Plink creators thought on this one as well and basically they implemented a GZ option. So if you write dash dash R square GZ, then this actually creates a zipped file or a packed file already as your output. So you are not using as much space. Of course, in these small examples, this is not an issue, but if you are looking to compute LD between many individuals and especially across large regions, then this comes in really handy. So just to clarify again, the size of the output file depends mostly on the size of the regions you examine and the number of SNPs in them. So if you compute LD between many SNP pairs, also your output files might be very large. And if this is indeed the case, then you are advised to use the, the GZ option as specified here. Also, there is an option to produce not just a pairwise results as you've seen before, but you can specify and compute already a square matrix of numbers. So for example, if you want to create some of these neat heat maps that we have shown in previous videos, so you can do that easily with the dash dash R2 square option. And just to show you how it looks like, it is basically a large matrix of numbers of R square values. And then you can use this to produce any type of output. For example, some of the heat maps we were speaking about and which we were showing in the previous videos. We also talked about other measures of LD than the R square, for example, the D prime or D or D prime. So this is also possible to compute with Plink with ease. So basically you need to just specify the dash dash R2 D prime option and you get the LD values in this metric. So these were some of the options you can use to compute LD with Plink. There are quite a few more and I just encourage you to look them up on the Plink website. And of course, depending on what you want to do, you need to combine these options to get the desired result. The other part I wanted to show you is the visualization of the LD decay. I also showed you some of these plots in the previous videos, so I thought I will give you also an example. So we have an example run here, so we are clear what is going on. So we compute the R square for a window of maximum 1000 SNPs and maximum 1000 kilobases away. And we take all the SNPs, so also all the R square values that are larger than zero. We name this output file LD example. So an LD example.ld is being created. This we load into R and then process further down a bit. Now, what we want to do in this figure is to plot the LD between markers that are certain distance away. And that's why we do not plot straight the base pair position, but we compute the marker distance between the SNP A and SNP B. And here I just divided by thousand just to have it in a KB or the kilobase uh, distance rather than distance in base pairs. What I also want to do is to calculate the LD in a 20 KB bins. So this is why I compute also here the intervals and I specify the 20 KB distance. Of course, you can vary this one and see what happens. But basically, this part of the scripts computes the average LD in a 20 KB bin. And this will be also then plotted as the line running through those many dots that we will be on the final figure. I have to say that I'm not entirely satisfied with this uh, small script I'm having here. I feel it must be possible also to do it in a 
in a simpler way, but uh, well, I ended up with this, uh, this kind of script. So what I have is I compute the average LD and then here I have all the values. I merge the two data sets and I plot them with a ggplot marker distance against the R2 or the, well, the, for the LD computed as an R square. And there is a line running through for each marker distance and the average R square for each 20 KB bin with a, well, it will be a red line at the end. So this is how the plot looks like. You see that there are LD value, values all around the place. Also with the relatively large distances, there are high LD values quite frequently, which is frankly a bit surprising for me. But also what you see that these high LD values are more prevalent when the markers are very close to each other. So we have this decay of uh, average LD values. And the last bit of computation I want to show you regarding LD and Plink is the so-called LD pruning. So this is basically a procedure to remove SNPs from the data set. So in some cases, you do not want a high LD SNPs appearing simultaneously in your data set. So in this case, you apply this so-called LD pruning, meaning that you identify the high LD SNP pairs and you remove one of them. So it is done in two steps. The first one is finding the high LD marker pairs with the dash dash in-depth pairwise. And here I want to highlight that also in the previous videos, I suggested you to use the dash dash non-founders option, but not here. Here, if you actually have founder animals and if you want to conduct this LD pruning, you have to use the dash dash make founders option. This is very important. Of course, this LD pruning also has its own description on the Plink webpage. So it's just about the LD statistics reports that we were checking out before. So this is the in-depth pairwise and the three parameters you need to specify here is the window size. You want to check out, this is in KB, the step size. So how many variants you want to check out simultaneously and the LD threshold you specify as the maximum, which should not be exceeded by your variant pairs. So in my small example, I look at 50 KB windows five variant pairs and I take the 0.7 as my threshold for the LD pruning. So these, these values are of course just examples and you can and you should use whatever fits your research question. So we run this and just please note that I, I don't have he, here any dash dash recode or make bed or anything like that because we are not really interested right now in the output genotype file, but we are interested in these two lists that are created, that are, are the prune in list and the prune out list. And depending if you want to exclude or include data, you use one of them. So this is how the prune out file looks like. You see that this is just one column with the snip names. So this is already prepared to be used with the dash dash exclude or dash dash extract statements so you can actually keep or remove the SNPs that you are interested in. So you can do that very easily with, uh, for example, what I did here. So I used then in a, as a follow-up, the dash dash exclude after QC prune out, and I have my pruned data set that I can use further. So this was the brief introduction, computing LD with Plink. If you're interested in a similar content, don't forget to subscribe to a Genomics Bootcamp. For today, I thank you for your time and wish you a very nice continuation of the day.